good morning uh, we are actually discussing on geotechnical investigation and we are almost at the end of it today i'll just complete and summarize uh, uh, plenty of things will be there but uh, we'll not be able to discuss everything what are the importance uh, and i will and uh, essential for undergraduate level i'll try to uh, discuss those and uh, last last uh, module i was discussing about uh, the geophysical method and in fact uh, before that i have discussed uh, spt cpt test and spt and C spt is very very popular in india particularly and cpt also becoming popular and they are field test uh, while doing the borehole we can also collect sample carry out test and get the information about the soil whereas uh, geophysical method actually is a quick method uh, very quickly you can cover a, a large area and qualitative information about the soil profile and soil type we can get and uh, both are having some advantage and disadvantages and uh, of course i have discussed geophysical method under geophysical method there are diffraction method then cross hole down hole up hole there are so many methods we have discussed uh, refraction method actually suitable for where actually when the with deeper when you go deeper and deeper if the soil uh, modulus increases that means it becomes stiffer and stiffer as you go deeper and deeper then this will be useful and when there is a particular stratification then the soil will uh, either move through the first layer or it will strike on the second layer and partly it will be reflected and partly it will be refracted and considering that refracted wave uh, refracted wave uh, that uh, and based on first arrival time we have seen that how to find out the velocity of the wave in the first layer, velocity of the wave in the second layer, thickness of the layer etcetera all calculation and it can be of more than one layer also the if you have more than two layers that calculation will be little uh, lengthy uh, which we have not uh, I have not discussed, but uh, any standard uh, geophysical uh, method book uh, we can find out. Uh, so, uh, th that we have discussed and then secondly uh, we have discussed about different uh, uh, methods uh, like cross hole, down hole, up hole. There actually we have uh, 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 generated a uh, uh, vibration at a source and then we have uh, particular distance, we have recorded the velocity and uh, so recorded the time uh, when it is reaching and based on the uh, distance uh, we have fixed and time taken we can find out the velocity. So, that is the way once uh, cross hole means uh, both uh, receiver and source both are at the same level and in the bore hole itself and for to find out the velocity at different depth you can fix a different level. Similarly, uh, for uh, down hole means actually uh, source will be off and, uh, and the ground and measurement receiver will be in the bore hole at different depth and that uh, that is a down hole and similarly reverse of that the off hole means source will be in the bore hole and receiver will be in the ground and then but just by knowing the distance and the travel time you can find out the velocity those things we have discussed and the last method was that uh, uh, resistivity, resistivity method and this resistivity method uh, actually basically uh, 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 re resistance of the soil actually by me we measure and based on that we can uh, quali qualitatively we can uh, uh, find out the type of soil and basically uh, what we do in this uh, resistance to movement of an electrical current through soil is determined in the electrical resistivity method. So, and this is the formula we use actually uh, that is uh, your resistivity is equal to 2 pi d v by i and if i v by i is if i replace by r resistance. So, 2 pi d r is a res resistivity and if the typical experimental uh, procedure is something like that it will be uh, some some distance it will be fixed and it will be volt will be from here current will be passed through this and from there actually by measuring the uh, uh, this uh, this fixing the distance and all 
we can find out the resistivity, resistivity ultimately because we will fix the uh, voltage and we measure uh, 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 I and D and from there actually we can find out the resistivity. So, uh, particular forces what is the current is passing and based on that actually you can do it and the D can be varied. So, by this way one can find out the resistivity of the soil and uh, uh, sorry some qualitative information about the resistivity as see if the soil's resistivity varies inversely with its water content. That means, if the soil has more water it will have less resistivity. Similarly, dissolved ion concentration these two things inversely proportional to the water content and dissolved ion So, because of clay soil exhibit high dissolved ion content concentration and wet clay soil have the lowest resistivity of soil materials. So, that means, uh, in the clay soil charged particle actually in that ion concentration will be very high because of that it will have lowest resistivity and the value can be as low at, uh, as uh, 1.5 ohm meter and coarse dry sand gravel deposit and massive bedrock can have as high as 2400 ohm meter. So, these are the some quality for that means where it will be we expect less where we expect high value. And uh, the typical uh, 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 values of different soils of uh, resistivity is given in this. You can see clay soil weight to moist 1.5 to 3 ohm meter resistivity. Similarly, silty clay, silty soil will be 3 to 15 ohm meter, silty sand to sandy shale is 15 to 150 ohm meter, or bedrock 150 to 300 uh, ohm meter. So, these are actually unit of resistance and we can uh, find out uh, uh, carry out the test in the site and then if you get this resistance and then we can classify the soil based on that the range of values we get from the from the site and based on that we can classify the soil either clay or silty sand or silty soil, silty sand or sandy soil or bedrock something whatever may be the values and based on that we can uh, classify this. Uh, so, these are actually some of the uh, field tests we carry out one is geophysical methods SPT, SCPT and there are some more tests that they are nowadays available the one is actually uh, your uh, uh, pressure meter test another is vent shear test and there are several other tests. So, uh, I will discuss now uh, about the vent shear test and Venshear test actually where it is applicable uh, basically uh, uh, in the soft soil in the soft soil uh, 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 very difficult to get undisturbed uh, sample and uh, so uh, and uh, why it is difficult and then uh, while sampling ultimately if you sample it and you may find that uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, uh, structure is disturbed uh, uh, highly and as a result whatever we get the results from the uh, lab test it will vary significantly from the field condition. So, as a result this type of soil that means from the soft clay soil where sampling is difficult and uh, during sampling process is too much disturbance happens and it happens particularly for sensitive clays. Sensitive clays means that is the uh, how much actually it vary when rebonded and uh, undisturbed condition. So, that sensitive clay when it is there then in that case it is preferred to carry out uh, Venshear test that means, this is a Venshear test is a field test directly you can carry out in the field and in this Venshear test uh, basically it has uh, two vents you can see one vents here one vent is here another vent is this they are at right angles to each other like this and uh, and then uh, of course, it will be penetrated it will not be the penetrated at this middle of this where two rectangular sheet uh, like which is called here vein uh, they are meeting that point actually welded through a uh, rod and th this is the rod actually uh, and this rod uh, when it is welded uh, this is that that we can say at four parts four blades. Uh, kind of molded at the uh, rod 
uh, at right angles to each other. So, this angle 90 degree, this angle 90, this angle 90, this angle 90 degree. So, four vents basically. Uh, in fact, two seats uh, meet at right angles to each other, but if you see with respect to the rod, then you can see the four vents welded in the rod. So, then this rod actually uh, this vane it have particular dimension, it will have a height and diameter and where actually we need to carry out the test first of all with this rod and we have to lower the vane inside the soil and then slowly uh, you have to rotate the uh, rotate the rod uh, that means by rotating what you are doing we are applying a torque and that means when we apply torque through this rod then that vane will try to rotate within the soil when you will try to rotate within the soil then what will happen there will be resistance at the bottom uh, bottom of the vane when vane is uh, rotating like this uh, rotating like this rotating like this then you have actually uh, you will have uh, uh, resistance at the bottom similarly at the top also it will have resistance because when it is rotating like this there will be resistance and also when the vane is rotating like this then it on the surface there will be resistance. So, three different places it will have resistance and you can draw the resistance at the surface. Uh, and the vertical uh, surface actually cylindrical we can uh, uh, everywhere is average actually uniform uh, pressure we can assume and when it is at the base actually uh, at the at the base actually what happens uh, you know the circular shaft when we apply torque the shear stress distribution actually something like this maximum at the center and 0 at the uh, sorry maximum at the periphery and minimum at 0 at the center. So, this is the distribution here also most likely it can be like that, uh, uh, but uh, we can assume different types of pressure distribution and most of the time we consider uniform pressure distribution instead of this type of distribution we consider this type of di uniform distribution uh, for simplicity. So, that means we can assume everywhere this to this uniform pressure distribution uh, is there. So, that means bot from the bottom uniform uh, shear resistance from center to periphery the top also uniform shear resistance from uh, uh, from center to periphery uh, and that is nothing but average and then surface there will be again the shear resistance will be there. So, now all shear resistance whatever is getting from bottom top and uh, from the uh, surface cylindrical surface that if it is taken moment with respect to the center that actually must be equal to the torque applied. So, that is the concept used here and uh, if you do that you can see typically uh, let me show you the uh, in the next slide that you can see that uh, 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 so here actually uh, three parts this is actually pi d. So, the, if this is the diameter of the uh, uh, vane suppose vane one end to other end is this this is one end to other end. So, that and this is one end to other end. So, that means this is the diameter of the vane. So, pi times d is the perimeter and then if you h multiply then vertical cylindrical surface and C u is the uh, if the shear strength if I assume then that means from the uh, vertical cylindrical surface you are getting this much resist resisting shear stress. And if I consider the uh, uh, cylinder at the bottom suppose one circular area and if I uh, consider a uh, at a resistance r a small thickness dr then it will have 2 pi r is the perimeter and thickness is dr and shear is c cu that means that small thin annular ring if i assume for that shear resistance 2 pi r dr cu 2 pi r dr cu okay so and that can be integrated from uh, 0 to uh, yeah, I have taken as radial distance r. So, I can take 0 to d by 2. So, it is not d it is d by 2. Uh, so, 0 to d by 2 uh, you can integrate and since it is there at the top and bottom. So, I can multiply by 2. So, it will become total resistance become this. Now, I as I have told that uh, uh, finally, you are applying torque. So, I have to get torque here also. So, to get torque what I will do? So, pi d h c u into d by 2 that gives you uh, the uh, torque and here 
2 pi r dr c u instead of d by 2 I should write r actually because at a distance r I have taken. So, this r multiplied by this. So, this become actually your uh, total uh, torque. Now, if I integrate this and simplify then you will get torque equal to pi c u d square h by 2 plus d cube by 6. This is the final formula of re equating or relating applied torque and shear strength of the soil under shear strength of the soil and dimension of the vane. What is the dimension of the vane? D is the diameter, h is the height. So, this is the way I can get and C is the under shear strength of the soil, D is the diameter of the vane, h is the height of the vane. So, this is actually I have uh, got based on what actually though at the bottom at the above uh, uh, the vane at top and bottom when you are and connected through the rod and you are rotating the rod while rotating the rod then the entire vane will be rotating. So, that means, if the entire vane within the soil is deep enough then the above the vane and below the vane both places there will be resistance. So, we have considered both surfaces actually at the bottom and top and based on that we have got a relationship between the external torque and the shearing resistance of the soil offering in terms of dimension of the vane. Now, uh, this is actually many times many times uh, you uh, vane actually it may not be uh, penetrated deep enough and as a result uh, resistance from the top may not be so what is the procedure for carrying out vane shear test we generally make a borehole and suppose I want to carry out test at 5 meter depth. So, I will make borehole up to 5 meter and then through the borehole I will lower the uh, vane and then at from the bottom of the vane we may, we may penetrate little distance. If that distance is not enough then actually what happens then while rotating that resistance at the surface above the vane may not be enough. So, it can be ignored and if you do so if you do so then you can see that in that case when one side resistance is there the pi d uh, h c u is the uh, vertical surface uh, resistance and uh, 2 pi r d r c u is the uh, uh, resistance from the bottom. So, I have not multiplied by 2 because I have ignored the top. Now, if I integrate now if I consider the moment then it will be pi d h c u d by 2 plus this is not again d by 2 it will be r. So, 2 pi r d r c u into r then it become torque and I have not multiplied by 2 because only 1 I have considered and if I simplify this one integrate and simplify then I will get torque equal to pi c u d square h by 2 plus d cube by 12. So, this is only from the previous equation it was 6 now it become 12 because I, this was multiplied by 2. So, now uh, so this is 2 uh, that means uh, based on the field condition either you can use that one previous equation or you can use this equation that this equation is for what this is actually ignoring the resistance from the top and other one is considered resistance from both top and bottom. So, with this that is a simple problem uh, you can see there is a, a vein of 112.5 millimeter long and 75 millimeter diameter was pro, uh, uh, press, pres, uh, present uh, pressed into soft clay at the bottom of a borehole torque was applied to failure of the soil. So, we do not know the torque or uh, the undrained shear strength of the clay was found from the another test as 40 kilo Newton per meter square. Determine the value of torque at which the failure of the soil occurred considering resistance both from top and bottom and from bottom only. So, two cases that means first case that means if you consider a failure at both place uh, resistance from both. So, that will be T equal to pi C u uh, d square h by uh, 2 plus d q by 12 uh, d q by 6 actually this is uh, uh, 6 this is 6 and if I now put all those values pi multiplied by 40 multiplied by 0 0.07 square multiplied by 0 0.1125 all millimeter in converted to meter 2 plus 
डी क्यूब जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सेवन फाइव क्यूब टुएल्व बाई डिवाइड बाई टुएल्व इफ आई डू दिस देन यू विल गेट ए वैल्यू इक्वल टू सिंपली यू कैलकुलेट इन अ यूजिंग अ सिंपल कैलकुलेटर देन यू गेट द वैल्यू इक्वल टू और सॉरी फर्स्ट वन इज एक्चुअली सिक्स फर्स्ट वन इज एक्चुअली सिक्स ओके आई हैव डन दैट एंड इट इज एक्चुअली कमिंग जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फोर एट फाइव नाइन किलो न्यूटन मीटर और फोर्टी एट पॉइंट सिक्स न्यूटन मीटर वेर एज फॉर सेकेंड एक्चुअली टी इक्वल टू पाई सी यू डी स्क्वायर एच बाई टू प्लस डी क्यू बाई ट्वेल्व एंड इफ आई पुट पाई मल्टीप्लाइड बाई फोर्टी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सेवन फाइव स्क्वायर मल्टीप्लाइड बाई जीरो पॉइंट वन वन टू फाइव डिवाइड टू प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सेवन फाइव क्यूब डिवाइड बाई ट्वेल्व If I do this one, you get a value uh, equal to this value will be equal to uh, your 44.2, 40 uh, 44.2 newton meter. Initially, it will come in kilo newton meter. Then, if finally you convert 44.2 newton meter, you can see that when uh, both side resistance was considered, the uh, resistance was. 48 and one side is 44. Definitely, that is required. Uh, that is obvious because uh, torque when it will be one side is there, torque will be less. When both side torque will be there, then it will value will be more. So that is the thing. Uh, uh, this is the simple calculation. Sometime uh, instead of giving this value, uh, uh, torque uh, uh, instead of asking torque, many times it will be given that that the test failed at a torque. Equal to this much, then what is the value of uh, shear strength of the under shear strength of the soil? So torque will be given. Sometimes this will be asked. So here actually it is given reward that value of the shear strength is determined from another test. This value, then what will be the torque? That is actually before going to the test. Sometimes we may have to estimate what will be the torque required. So this type of calculation you have to. But again, you have to go to the field. We will get the actual torque. Anyway, so I will go to the next slide. And you can now. I will just uh, with this. I will complete uh, uh, the geotechnical investigation, and just I will summarize actually. And uh, first of all, as I have mentioned that uh, when you uh, plan for geotechnical investigation, you have to first plan. Actually, you have to visit the site, and then uh, what method to be used for ge geotechnical investigation that to be fixed. And then after knowing that, then we have to find out borehole location, number, depth. And spacing, all those things to be fixed based on the importance of the project or actually uh, 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 type of soil. Based on the type of soil and type of project, you have to first select what method will be used. Then, first of all, how many number of boreholes is required that to be fixed, and then where will be the boreholes? Actually, borehole location to be fixed, and then what should be the spacing? And what should be the depth? So all those things I have discussed elaborately at the beginning. Just I have summarized that in geotechnical investigation means what you have to do the boring first, and for that boring you have to fix the equipment. And after fixing equipment, you have to do how many boreholes, where their location, what will be their pressing, what will be their depth based on the type of project. So all those things to be done. And after doing all those things, finally you have to get a Uh, 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 we have to get a bore log, something like this. You can see borehole one, about twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and we have got different types of soil within the borehole. Here, actually, we have got different types of soil. Here, we have got different, and they are actually side by side, some distance. Then, if you get this type of variation, then by and uh, large, you can uh, visualize the profile of the soil in that area. So, that is the thing shown here. If possible, that is the thing also one has to do in the. Uh, soil testing report that means bore holes actually bore logs with details or stratification this is the first part and then next is uh, then after doing that uh, you need to do the classification of the soil that means uh, after uh, knowing that you have to collect sample 
and from that sample actually may be undisturbed sample you do classification and index properties and then afterwards if you have some uh, your uh, undisturbed sample then you carry out laboratory test different types of sorry different types of laboratory test uh, was there different types of laboratory test we have discussed that like, that like, uh, uh, like uh, direct shear test, triaxial test, then consolidation test all those things to be considered and based on that you have to determine the different soil properties. And those soil properties has to be uh, uh, again reported uh, the main value to be reported in a particular uh, place and maybe detailed uh, test result can be put in the annexer. And this is the one type of carrying out the test and then simultaneously if there is a possibility if there is possible if it is possible then you have to carry out a, a number of uh, field test and those are SPT, CPT, Venshia test or pressure measure test some other test. So, to be carry, carried out and then uh, uh, there will be uh, some correlation with the soil property with the SPT, CPT that you have to check and from there you find out the values of. Uh, soil properties and at the same time you have to get, you get the laboratory test and you have to see that how they are uh, actually with their too much varying then you have to do some more test uh, and you have to repeat or you have to take some judgment for finally, finally to recommend the value of the uh, uh, of the soil properties. And this is after doing this other te uh, field test then field test can be correlated with the different soil properties I have shown in the tabular form. There are uh, some uh, charts form also available this is one of them actually that SPT values with effective stress and phi. So, this is actually I have taken from old uh, publication because of that this is the new publication slightly different version is available this is directly effective stress here actually in non dimensional form is given vertical stress over P naught and here it is given blow similar to that only this side directly effective stress and this type blow and these are the curve for different uh, values of phi. And so, uh, if I have suppose a blow count of 40 and effective stress of some value then I will project onto that and then get the value of phi. If the value comes somewhere here then I can interpolate between this. So, like that we can use the chart also to find, find out the value of the phi value. So, this is one chart similar to this using CPT also similar chart is available again. Uh, uh, this is also a old one. So, the newer one. So, it will be directly effective stress and this is tip resistance and these are actually phi value. So, one can use the uh, uh, this type of chart uh, after field test the field test actually what you are getting cone resistance or SPT value and then use the chart to get the value of phi. So, uh, or, or I have whatever uh, tabular form I have given those uh, table can be used also to find out or estimate the value of uh, the shear strength parameter or some other parameter there are plenty correlations are available. So, with this uh, I will just close geotechnical investigation there may be many things to discuss, but I, uh, this is I have to stop somewhere. So, uh, what are important I have just considered uh, now I will go to the next topic may be uh, that earth pressure and stability of retaining water retaining wall. Thank you.